Okay, guys, um, as I said at the beginning of the hypochlorite and um, hydroxide video through electrolysis, one advantage of doing this process is that it, it leaves it open to an easy way to get your own potassium chlorate. It's KClO3. And to obtain that, what you do is you simply take your bleach or your potassium hypochlorite solution and you want to violently heat it pretty much. I mean, take it up to its boiling point and, then, and let it come down. And then the first crystals you'll get out of it uh, will have been thermolytically oxidized into potassium chlorate. Then you had to prove um, that I had made some from the hypochlorite solution that we got. What you see right here, this is a about a one-to-one -one ratio roughly of ascorbic acid to the potassium chlorate. And we're just going to do a little flame test on it here quick. And you'll see right away how reactive this is, proving that I had made the potassium chlorate. There you go. Sugar and ascorbic acid will not burn like that alone. So, there's proof of what we actually made. So, side note, probably should have said it in the video. Uh, when I was trying to get the hypochlorite crystals out of solution, I was not heavily heating it. I was trying to really control my heat and keep it under like 80 C the whole time. You start getting up above 80 C for prolonged periods of time, you're inevitably going to start oxidation to potassium chlorate. And, uh, you know, that's something that you guys really need to be aware of. Because as you see, potassium chlorate is a pretty decent oxidizer. I mean, that's why they use it for fireworks so much. So, don't want to mistake potassium chlorate for hypochlorite. They will act differently. The two extra little atoms of oxygen per molecule really make a difference. 